Hello! Today we are here to talk about Unfathomable, which was a Gen Con pickup that Rob yep. actually found for me. Yep. Didn't even know it was going to be there, and you discovered it and picked it up for me. I, I awesome. He, he would have found it. I just got to got to it a little earlier than probably he would have seen it. But yeah, it, it was a pretty neat surprise being able to find this as early as we did. Yeah. So uh, this is a special day for me because yeah. this is a remake of Battlestar Galactica, which is one of my all-time favorite games. So I was super stoked to actually get to play it today. So uh, before we get into it though, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell over there somewhere because uh, you wanna stay up with all these games. We got plenty more Gen right. Con releases to go. We got wrapping up Western Wednesday soon. We're moving into Halloween games. Got lots of things coming. All kinds of cool stuff. Yep, and we got another series we'll be starting up after Western Wednesday. We're gonna be doing uh, bookshelf games. Cool. So yep. Awesome. So, uh, Rob, tell us about Unfathomable. All right, so uh, Unfathomable came out this year, but it's not available in retail yet, but it looks like it should be available in November, so if you want to pick this up, that's when it should come out. Uh, it's got a pretty good rating on Board Game Geek is 8.1. Designers Tony uh, Fanchi and Corey Konitska, I guess. Yeah, Corey that? Konitska is the one who developed Battlestar. So okay, this is, yeah. so there you go. And then, But the odd thing is, is that they... Uh, uh, Fantasy Flight didn't put anybody down for the art, so I don't know who did all this art. And there's a yeah. lot of nice artwork yeah, in this game. Yeah, it's pretty art. So I don't know who did that. So probably either so many people they didn't list it, or I don't know. But I thought that's kind of strange that nobody was out there for art. It plays three to six people, which is kind of nice. Um, some mechanics is you got hand management, it's definitely hidden trader like a, a Battlestar is. It's co-op. MSRP is $79.95, although you can find it cheaper through your uh, print a local game shop. And uh, again, we got it at Gen Con, but it's not available yet in retail, but it should be soon. All right, so let's talk about the quality components here. So first of all, this is actually nicer than Battlestar as far as the quality, because, I mean, these miniatures are pretty amazing. I thought the minis in Battlestar are as cool, too, but they're bigger. Well, so, I mean, the minis for Battlestar, were, you had standees for well, like people. Well, the plastic ships Yeah, you had great. the ships, but they were really tiny, and, you know, they weren't yeah. this solid. I mean, this is solid. I, I agree, I, I, but I still like the, 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 yeah. the silent ships. And, they did and, look and, like the ships. Yeah, the ship. they were really cool. But, but, yeah, these are definitely bigger, and they're very very um, detailed so they're mm -hmm. really nice looking uh the board's got a linen finish mm -hmm. uh the cards have a linen finish but they're very thin they almost feel like paper yeah i mean um, the linen finish is nice but they're not very thick at all no no uh it's actually i think these are probably not as nice of cards as battlestar i don't think so either um, and then you got play you got little cheat sheets for the it's not it, yeah. it's, it's standard cardboard thickness yeah. i think and for your play and then you get individual player cards as well as um well, like special power cards for each mm -hmm. player as well. Uh, you got built-in dials, just like in Battlestar yeah. for the board. Um, it, all in all, this is pretty nice. I yeah, mean, uh, for sure. I think it's other. I think the minis are nicer. Yeah, but I think it's about it's about the same quality as Battlestar, which is I always thought was pretty nice. Well, except for I think the cards are slightly less. You think uh, so? I'm going to give it a 7.5. Uh, I think with the miniatures, these are outstanding, mm -hmm. but I think they detracted a little bit elsewhere. I probably would have given it an 8 else, otherwise. I don't know. 7.5 seven is a good 8. I, I, I'm around that mark, too. So I, I just I think I'll go 8. I think the minis are really cool looking. They're really detailed. I mm -hmm. like them a lot. And they're definitely bigger and better than Battlestars. Yeah. So I think I'll go an 8. All right. Uh, so let's talk about themes. So th this is a completely skinned on because yeah, absolutely. I mean, this originally was Battlestar. They it's the same for them, pretty much for game. There's some slight tweaks, but it's basically the same game. But it's now layered in the Arkham Horror Cthulhu yeah. lore. Um, so you know, I I like what I, th I thought was very thematic and funny about yeah. this was. The cards, the, the the you're on a cruise ship in this game, and the you in Battlestar they call them crisis cards, and this they call them mythos cards. Mm -hmm. 
but they have like backstory or not really backstory, but basically flavor text. Yeah, a lot of a lot of flavor text. A lot of, and it's like you're managing a cruise line, and these, <laughs> you're while you're being attacked by these giant sea creatures, you've got first class passengers that are not happy that they have to go into the second class <laughs> cabins or do you know. So you're trying to see how if you want to keep them happy or or, or rescuing them. And it's or, like it's hilarious. Yeah. I mean, it's, some of it does. I don't know if it's intentionally hilarious either. It seems like it was almost like a casual uh, I think humor. so I think so because there's some, there, I mean some of the other Arkham Horror stuff has got some tongue in cheek stuff yeah too, but so. it, it is so funny it's but like it is funny. you're really going to worry about your, your, your wanting to see you know not have cabin chairs right. because you're burning them for fuel versus uh, you know because it's going to make your first class passengers unhappy while, while you're getting attacked by elder creatures from another universe <laughs> exactly <like that. laughs> and of course they, you know whenever your passengers do manifest they rush to the side of the boat so they can <laughs> right. be right there and get eaten <laughs> I mean, it's just you know it, I don't, it, that one I don't think was a decision right. but it is funny that is they funny. do that so it brought a lot of laughs during the game uh, so I almost feel like this is more accessible of a game. I think so than too. I, it feels a little bit more streamlined, maybe because of those little tweaks that we'll get to in yeah. game play. But I do think it's more accessible than Battle Stars, and, and it didn't take as long. No. Oh, and, but this is you know you know Battle Star. If you took the base game and you don't add on all the I, other, even with six people though, it felt like Battle Star six player was a longer game than this. But yeah, I mean, I, it definitely felt like this was. Uh, a more accessible premise to the game. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I definitely think this is, you know, if if anyone's a fan of the Cthulhu theme, it's going to attract them in more. I agree. Uh, and it, and if you're not a Cthulhu fan, it doesn't. It isn't necessarily in your face. I mean, no. And that's an interesting thing. I don't. I don't know if uh, we really talked about during gameplay, but if you played any of the Arkham Horror stuff from Fantasy Flight, they had a lot of common uh, mechanics and a lot of common symbology. And I don't, I didn't see any of that in this game. Well, it does have the elder signs, but yeah, apart from that, yeah, but, but but like all those different mechanics look, I mean, like, like the mechanics for the cards are different than yeah. some of the similar things that would be in the other Arkham War type games. Yeah. So I, I like that uh, mm -hmm. because I thought some of that stuff gets a little too used up and it just, I don't know, it feels a little bit samey mm -hmm. with some of the other Arkham War type games. This one felt a little bit more fresh. Yeah. So thematically, I'm going to probably give this, I think, an eight. I think is where I'm at. It, it, it'd probably been higher if it weren't for the fact that it is it's clearly layered on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, I mean, that's the only way they could do it. They had a game right. that was already skinned and they modified it. Uh, the, I think they lost a little bit in the character feeling. Like, you know, in Battlestar, you feel like the character from True. the show. And this, True. because there is no show. Yeah, you don't have anything to relate to. You don't to have it. the depth of character. Right. But I think that if this wasn't a reskin of Battlestar, it would probably a 10. Just because we know what this is based off of. So yeah. it doesn't feel as unique in that regard. But at the same time... I don't want to detract from something that I think really does help it, and that's the artwork. Oh, yeah, we didn't the, talk about the art. The artwork is fan. Yeah. Fantastic. Maybe this I, game. I, the, maybe the, I, the, the art on the board is really good. The box art's really mm -hmm. good. The card art is really good. Like any of the Fantasy Play Arkham Horror games, it's got the same art style, mm -hmm. the almost photorealistic, and it's just really beautiful artwork. So I, I think I'm going to give it a nine, maybe yeah, nine and a half. I think I, you got my, my opinion too. I think it's a nine. Because, uh, like I said, the art. And what also I didn't think about is the characters are not the same characters for, that you see all the time. In right. All the, because you see the same characters, like the, from, like the journalist to, yeah. to Arkham Horror, to, it's always the same. These are different characters, right? Uh, so yeah, I, nine is probably yeah a much better score for it. Um, all right, so let's talk about the rule book. Now the rule book, there's two. There's one that's a rules reference, and then the actual rule book. I don't like the the way they did the covers. This is the one thing I was unhappy with. Is it looks very basic, very plain. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they're both that way, a very subdued green, subdued purple. Um, the book itself explains the rules pretty well and pretty clearly. They have, uh, hey, you know, I had to reference them a couple of times yeah. during game. Well, you know, it helps I've played Battlestar sure, Galactica that's true. That's true. forever. Uh, 28 pages long. Um, I basically just skimmed them looking for differences. A lot of pictures, and, a lot of references. And, and, yeah. A lot of pictures, all of them in the subdued colors. Again, it doesn't, you know, 
the same problem Battlestar had as far as they, there's a lot of rules in this, and there's not a good in this book. There's not a lot of good reference. Right now, in this one, there is an index, so you can look up the terminology, and it'll tell you where to find things. That's nice. This book, however, doesn't have. It's a lot of it is more like a it's just definitions bullet points, yeah. and yeah, it's not as many images in this one. So. I think one thing going for it though is that because this is the first game in this series, you don't have to have that comprehensive rule list that hurts Battlestar. You got yeah. all those expansions, and you don't have one, you know, complete rule book for that. It kind of detracts yeah. from that game. You don't have to worry about that here. But what I will say, where it makes up for the rule books lacking, is they actually took the things that we had to search for in the Battlestar book over and over and over again right. and put them on cheat cards. Yep. So they have cheat cards for the Cylons. They have, or not Cylons, yes. they, for the uh, for hybrids. For the player characters and then the hybrids. Yes. They have cheat cards for the, the hierarchy of whenever, yep. if you change the, the succession chain for Captain and for keeper of, of the, the tome. tome in this, which if, if you were playing Battlestar would be the Admiral and the President. Right. Uh, so they've given you all those things that you always had to look up and try to find what page it was on in the book. You know, this, they put it right there on those cards and that helped a lot. It really did. You know, that's why we didn't have to reference the rules very often. We just checked them when mm -hmm. we were doing something for the first time in the game. So it, it once you get it down reading through this rule book, that really helps. Right. And teaching the game to people who never yeah, played yeah, it was we had super two, easy. Two, yeah, two people that never played the game at all. And then Miranda, who really doesn't like Battlestar that much. It seemed like everybody had a good time. Yeah. Uh, all in all, I'm going to say the rule book is probably an eight on this because of right. them having such nice side yeah, cards. I can agree with that. All right. So let's move on to gameplay now. So if you are familiar with Battlestar, this is very much the very same similar. there's the differences between this are very minute uh the big differences are one there's item cards that you can pick up and yeah. hold on to um second one is the they've tracks. broken the track out into two functions so there's right. basically moving and jumping your ship if you were playing Battlestar, when you would jump to your next planet in this case you're moving the ship along on your journey and you get to determine your path of your journey uh, just like you would in choosing the planets you're jumping to right uh in in this one though it doesn't reset the board it doesn't wipe mm -hmm. the board all it does is it moves the ship there's a second track which is your uh was it this spell or yeah uh it's, I it's called the cast track cast, yeah cast track so this one is where you there's in essence a ritual that's been developed by the story is that there's a there was some kind of powerful witch or something that had developed a spell to protect the boat, but she passed, and now the passengers are in desperation trying to re recreate Recreate that it. ritual. So this track moves along, and whenever it hits the end, it will wipe everything from the board that is not in the interior, which is good and bad because it will get rid of all the creatures that are attacking that haven't made assuming it Assuming they're not, yeah, assuming they're not in the interior. But what it won't do, what it will also do is it'll send anyone that's out there that's a passenger or is one of the players to the sick bay. Or if they're passengers. Yeah, then... passengers, then they get wiped as well and we lose those passengers. Right. So you know, it is good and bad. So you really have to be watching that and protect the passengers when it gets mm -hmm. close to the end of that track. Uh, so I thought that was a neat change. Yeah, it is. And it, it, it added a little bit more strategy to it. Like, yeah. do I want to go attack? Do I want to go get item cards? Do I want to save people? Yeah. A little bit more depth to it. And then the other thing that it adds, and you can say it added, but it really didn't. It made it so that you, when you reveal yourself as a traitor, in this case, it's a hybrid versus a Cylon right. in Battlestar, you actually stay on the board. Whereas mm -hmm. in Battlestar, if you're not playing with one of the later expansions where you actually could go back to the board, you were removed from the game as a player and you basically took actions as a kind of an amorphous body that was right. taking action. And everybody has basis. their own unique traitor uh, yes. ability. So once you reveal that you're a traitor, then you get this fairly powerful one-time ability to, that can pop off. Yeah. All right, so for all you non-Battlestar people, right. uh, let's talk about how this works. So basically, you, each player gets a character. It plays three to six 
Yeah, I assume it's going to be a lot like Battlestar, where five to six is the sweet spot. Right. Uh, you can play it with, with a three or less, a three, three to four. I don't think it's going to be nearly as good. I know Battlestar was not. Right. I, I would I, never I, play right. Battlestar with five or, with a less than five. Um, but in this case, you're going to each have a character. It's going to have its own uh, special abilities. You're going to be dealt you know, a starting hand of cards based upon what is on your board. And card. Each character gets five cards from different suits. Except for the starting player. Except for the starting player, but their first action of their turn before they take their right. actions we'll is something. they will get their hand. Uh, so it's really just to say you don't draw the cards twice. Right. Um, so that is a little different because in Battlestar, like the first player got three cards, I think, and it ever, or no, first player got their full suite, and everybody else got like three cards. But then they would draw, and they would draw back cards. on their first turn. Yeah. So this one's a little bit different than that, uh, a little more generous. Uh, and then you're going to um, get to take two actions on your turn. So one could be a move, mm -hmm. whereas in Battlestar, you've got a move and an action. So it's kind of a little different there too. Um, you get to you can move as one of your choices as an action, but it's not you know if you're in the space you want to be in, you, you don't, don't have, have to. Yeah. Uh, you can take that space that, that you've got or on. There's actions in the spaces if you're on the interior of the ship. Exterior, there's no actions. Uh, you can play the cards. Some of the cards that you get will have actions mm -hmm. on them. You can play those. Uh, your player act character may have an action on yeah, it. Yeah, th there's a lot of asynchronous mm -hmm. actions for your characters too. I had a really nice one. So. Yeah. Uh, you can fight creatures. If there's creatures on the board, starting the game, there'll be a couple. You'll have a uh, couple in the front in two positions on the ship. And then you're going to, you, so you can go and attack them with the die roll. You have to roll uh, four or better, I believe it is, right. with the dice right. uh, to, to wipe them out. Um, so those are all the different, well, you can trade cards too. That's another action you can do. We never if did. If you're in the same space. space you have, where... Yeah, you have to be in the same space together. That, that's pretty typical. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, basically how you start the game. You can do whatever you want as far as the actions go, but then at the end of your turn, after you've taken those two actions, you're going to draw a Mythos card, which is the replacement for Crisis cards. Mm -hmm. uh, it will give you some kind of a bad thing. Most, almost every card is bad. Right, but it's usually going to do one of two different things, yes. potentially. It's either going to be you get to uh, make a decision point. And most, most of them in this game we saw were captain right. decisions. But there were a few character-specific decisions. That was new, well. too. Yeah, yeah I, and, and, I, I, and that, I like that, too. Yeah, it reminded kind of cool. me of Dead of Winter. Yeah. yeah, but if the character's not in play, you just discard right, the card. Right, you draw another card. But, yeah, there, there weren't many, but we... But know, that was kind of cool. Yeah, but I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, but um, a lot of them were captain. Most of them were just captain. Yeah, most of them were captain. There was a few player choice, mm -hmm. but most of them were captain. So it seemed like there was a higher emphasis on captain this time. We didn't see any for the like, the keeper of the tome, which would right. be, we, there was a lot in, in Battlestar for the president. So that was kind of neat, different. Um, so, um, but you're either going to have that where you have to make a this or that choice. And usually both options are bad. Yeah. You're picking the lesser of two evils. Or you're going to get a uh, skill check. Mm -hmm. And skill checks are the meat of this game. So you have a card, and it'll, you've got suits, as I mentioned. There's five different suits that you're standardly going to have. There's also a sixth suit, which is the treachery card. And those cards will always be bad. If you put them into the play, it's going to count against you. So let's say you had a card, a skill check that required a 12, but you had to reach it with either the handshake, which is orange, or the uh, books, tomes, or whatever. The I think it's lore. In the lore, case. I think so. Yeah. It's purple. So if it required twelve, but they had to be more orange or purple. So if you contribute orange and purple cards, they have a value on them from zero to five, I believe is the highest. Um, if you put those in, they're going to count towards that goal of twelve. If you put any other suit in, it's going to count against you on your scoring of that. So it's going to take away from the number. So there's always a there's a uh, chaos deck they call mm -hmm. it that uh, you're going to put two cards from that at random into the pool so you don't know what those could be they could be helping they could be hurting but there's two from every one of these stacks that are in there so probability is they're going to hurt you yeah uh, and then you're going to contribute you know you go around the table from the left of the player whose turn it is active player goes all the way around and goes all the way around the table and everybody can you can talk amongst yourselves about basically 
Is this how much, how much you, can you can't yeah. say I'm putting in a two of orange and a four right. of purple, but you can say I can I, help a little. I can help a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, so then, assuming they're telling the truth. Yeah, and you don't have to tell the truth. This you game. do not. That's the best part of this game is you have no idea who's telling you the truth or not. So you contribute to what you're going to contribute. We shuffle all the cards together. We reveal one at a time until you get to the end. And if you pass or fail, it's going to be determined. Now, what we left out at the very beginning, and it's very important to this game, is there are these uh, basically alliance cards that you're going to get. Most of them are human. Uh, but among you, depending on player count, you're going to have one to two different hybrids. And those are hidden among you. And they may you may not get them at first. You may Everybody may, you be, may, human yeah, they may be human at the very beginning. But if you get one of those hybrid cards, you are now trying to sabotage so this is the skill checks are how you can really sabotage in the game because you can throw in cards that are not in those orange and purple suits and it will count against you and when you fail the skill checks they hurt yeah so you can be strategic about when you do it because you can either dump your entire hand in but it's going to make it very obvious right. that you are sabotaging if that's if you're the only person to do that and you get a ton of bad cards right or you can subtly do it by putting in one or two and hope that the skill you know, thing doesn't really show or reveal that mm -hmm. you were sabotaging. As far as being a hybrid, another thing you can do is on your turn, you can, as one of your actions, you can reveal yourself mm -hmm. as being a hybrid. And if you do, they have little markers to put on your standee to show that you are a revealed hybrid. And then from that point forward, you, you're going to the rules about you will change slightly. You won't be able to contribute as much to the the skills, so you won't be able to sabotage as bad. Um, but you will have abilities now that you didn't have before. Right. Some of which are specific to the player when you reveal. Uh, but you also have standard abilities as a hybrid that you can do other things to sabotage. Plus, you're a player on the board, so you can actually attack the other players, right. which is something that's unique. And I think the tough part for me in this game is that it is the objective cards. Because do I keep these cards because I got really nice abilities and I want to play them during my turn to be able to do cool stuff, or do I save them because I got a really high value that could go against the objectives and be pretty confident that you can meet that objective? It's it's a very much a risk versus reward system. Yeah, yeah. I, and I had to make that decision tough decision yeah. several times because I had one that like gave me extra actions. But it was a five count. Right. And it's like I held on to it until the very last time, and I'm like, I have to play it. I need that five right. to counteract because we knew we had some saboteurs among sure. us. So yeah, it, I mean, it's there's a high amount of tension in this game. If you don't like people backstabbing, if you don't like that hidden or, or stress conflict, of, yeah, the stress of people calling you traitor, or you, know. <laughs> <laughs> or you trying to argue that you're not a traitor when you are a traitor, yeah, if or you, vice versa. If you don't like that intrigue, this yeah. is not the game for you. But if that's you, the same as Battlestar. Though. Yeah, but if you like that thing, like I love that. That's what I, my favorite type of games are because those to me are the most memorable games. I will every time I play a game like this, I remember it and I remember stories about it. And I can say, oh, you remember that when you were the Cylon and you did this and that? You know, this one I can, you know, I'm, I'm going to remember. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's, I won't say I like this quite as well as Battlestar because I think it's, I, I like the theme of Battlestar better. Right. Uh, I, but I do think this is like right up there. I mean, this is, this is an excellent reproduction of Battlestar with some enhancements that I think were good. And it's an excellent option if you can't get your hands on Battlestar yeah. because it's a hard game it's to get. It's out of print. It's out of print. It's expensive. You can find it. Yep. And there's a ton of expansions that can really, I don't know if it adds, it certainly makes the game longer. And yeah. it's a, and it, it's it's a neat game, but this is readily available. Yeah. So well, it will be. It will be, yeah. Yeah. So if you have been holding out hope for Battlestar being reprinted, it's not going to be. Sorry. It's, you know, they lost the rights to Battlestar. Right. This is a great substitute. Absolutely. Uh, it's the closest you're going to get. It's way, I think Dark Moon was like the, originally the recreation. And I think by, we liked it, okay? Didn't we? I don't remember. Yeah, I, it's been a long I, time. I found it lacking. It I didn't, didn't think it was nearly as good as Battlestar. It, it had some of the similar mechanics, but I didn't think I, I liked I didn't it's like it. It's been too long to play with. This has exactly the same yeah, mechanics. It definitely has the same. Oh, I'd say the same amount of tension. Yeah. It really did. It does. And, you know, it was it could have gone either way. As you can look at the board and plainly see, we were in a mess. Yeah, we had almost all the frog god, creatures, whatever the heck they're called, 
I mean, almost every single one. And that's one of the losing conditions is if, if we have a summon card and it says bring them out and there's none to summon, you lose the game. Yeah. Immediately. And the humans eased into Boston Harbor yep. with, with all, all these, these creatures yeah, yeah, on us. Boston but we is screwed, won. but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Boston's going to be eating frog legs that's for right. the next six years. <laughs> But yeah, we managed to pull it off as a human victory. Uh, but I think mostly because our two sab saboteurs were the new people, you know. Right, as it and they didn't know how to take really take advantage of, yeah. of being the traders. So or the hybrids. I had a blast. I I really enjoyed it, and you know, even though I always loved being the trader, I was not the trader, and you know, proof positive that I'm not always the trader. So you guys can cut ninety nine percent of the time use the trader. This was the one percent that I was not the one percent. So. I, why are you going to score it? I'm going to have to give us a 9.5. I think it's not quite a 10 for me because right. Battlestar was my 10. This is a 9.5. This is really close. So this is probably one of my least favorite type of games. I generally play it because Randy wants to play it really bad and we need the people, so I'll play it. Um, but I have to admit, I do have a good time when playing it. It's just some of the mechanics, that you know, the, the conflict part of it. Sometimes I'm not always a big fan of that, but I did have a good time playing this tonight. Um, I generally have a good time playing Battlestar. So can I give it a nine and a half? No, but I think just out of pure enjoyment, I definitely give it a nine. Wow, that's a complete yeah, it, reversal yeah, from your it, Battlestar it, rating. It is, it is, but I think it is a little bit more streamlined. It's definitely quicker. And that was always one of my um, criticisms of Battlestar is the length of time that game can take. And th this wasn't, any, it didn't feel anyway as long as a Battlestar game usually is. Mm -hmm. And so that's big bonus points for me is just the length of time. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think this is an excellent reproduction. I'm so glad, I, you know, we were able to get a hold yeah. of it. Uh, you know, and I'm definitely glad I picked it up, even though I have Battlestar, two copies of it that I still <laughs> will cherish and love. This, this game will definitely be getting to the table as well. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm definitely excited about this was my day. I finally got to play this. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so hopefully you will be able to get this soon and you'll be able to enjoy it. If you already have it, let us know what you think. Yeah. We'd love to know. And uh, we'll talk to you next time and we'll have another great game. All right. Bye. Bye.